Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Minority Reports Podcast and Digital Series. I am your host, Mona Shake. You guys, uh, it's Friday. You know, today I was, uh, I woke up and uh, I just kind of had a bit of a spaced out day. Do you ever have those where you wake up in the morning and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like really productive today. I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna get stuff done. I have just been spaced out. Like, it's almost like my brain can't um, form sentences or it just can't, I can't follow through on stuff. Although I'm very proud of myself that I'm uh, able to uh, take a shower today, put some, uh, put myself together and uh, show up for this live stream today. So I'm very proud of myself, but this is about the most productive thing that I've done all day today. And uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to get through it without, uh, you know, somehow falling asleep during it. Hopefully not. Um, you guys, I'm very excited about today. Today, I'm doing something unusual. I've never had two uh, comics on, uh, two female comics especially, uh, where we just talk about uh, what it's like, what it's like, like in a day of a female comedian. I wanted to bring on uh, two comics. First, we're going to have uh, one comic and then another comic is going to join us at 7 p.m. because they're wrapping some stuff up. Uh, so I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited to talk about this, mainly because... I think a lot of people don't realize that as female comics, like, you know, we have like a lot of extra set of challenges that male comics usually would never even think about. For instance, if we go on tour, you know, male comics never have to worry about walking through a parking lot and or finishing up a show on some creepy dude waiting for them to follow them to their hotel room or follow them to a parking lot and try to creep up on them, try to get in their room or Possibly, what I'm trying to get at is to not get raped. Is guys don't ever have to ever have to fear about getting raped. We do, uh, and that's a real thing for us. So I wanted to bring on some female comics to really just kind of delve into what kind of stuff do they go through? Because you know we all have like these overlapping experiences with other female comics, and I really wanted to kind of bring them in and have this conversation of what is it really like. So my very first comic guest is here, and I'm very excited to have her. Uh, you know, she performs all over uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles. We were in a comedy show together. Uh, she actually has a book out called Salsa Chica, and I'm going to have her talk about it more. Uh, here's my very talented and funny friend, Blanche. How are you, friend? Hi, Mona. Great to see you. Nice to see you too, my friend. How are you doing? Good. Sorry I'm late. I was having issues with uh, Chrome. That's and- okay. All good. You're totally... Totally on time. I uh, was uh, ranting and raving about the fact that I do you ever have those days in lounge where you're just like spaced out? You're like trying to get stuff done, and then you somehow just keep getting distracted by mundane things, and you just can't get through stuff. Right? Do you go through that sometimes? God, I don't know. Yeah, like you're describing my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> like just spaced out. You're just like I'm trying to. I'm shocked that I'm able to even take a shower today and put myself together for this live stream. So this is the most productive thing. I'm very impressed. <laughs> I feel like I could barely get it together to get here on time. So I'm you are not alone. You look fantastic. Well, thank you very much. You're very sweet. You look you look very you look very uh, like refreshed and calm. It's like Oh really? Wow. Yeah. That I that is I definitely, I feel exhausted by the last uh, (laughs) events of the last few days. So Yeah, yeah, I believe you. I mean, it's such a collective conscience thing where everybody is feeling, I mean, this is the kind of a thing that's being felt around the world, right? I mean, you have international leaders stepping up and being like, we condemn this. Like, I'm just like, how crazy is that, that? We are usually the ones, the lead, you know, the leaders of the free world who are usually stepping up on our podiums and being just like, I condemn this dictator or that dictator. And now we have uh, international leaders stepping up and being like, we condemn Donald Trump. And I'm like, oh, this is embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it goes beyond embarrassing. It's like terrifying. It's too much. It's no. just too much at this point. You know, it's just too much at this point. So I was a. Uh, how how have you been holding up during the pandemic? Have you been doing a lot of online shows? Have you been, I think you have a book out, right? Called Salsa Chico? Yeah, my book, Salsa Chico, which I took like 13 years to finish, is available <laughs> on Amazon. I published it March 11th, just in time for the pandemic. So, 
Congrats. Uh, That's awesome. <laughs> thanks. I mean, I, I self-published it and I'm really proud of it, but I wish I could promote it as in like, here's this thing you can go do to enrich your life and have fun. And it's not a safe activity. That's for sure. Right. So I feel like the world that I wrote about is like, doesn't exist anymore and I don't know when it's going to come back. So I hate, I hate to say it, but it's like the, one of those things where you're like, this is what we used to do. Wasn't it great? And you know, it's kind of sad to, to look back at, at things. Like, I, know I did this live comedy shows. Wow. You remember when we used to do these intimate comedy shows, with like 80, hundred people packed. Yeah. We can't do that right now. Yeah. I know. I I look at all the comedy I did and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. You know, because one of those shows now would just seem like the highlight of your of my year, really. That's right. I was actually just talking about, you know, things that male comics never have to worry about when, you know, but for female comics, like a a life in the day of a female comic is so different than a life in, in a day of a male comic. Right. Um, like for instance, like male comics never have to worry about if they go on tour, that if somebody's going to come out and rape them, that's like a legit fear that every female com who's comic who's never been on the road has experienced. Have you toured a lot Solange? Is that, has that I haven't, I mean, I have to say that when I started comedy, it was a long time ago. It was like the nineties. And, um, I just, I started in LA and I did the open mic scene in LA and, I knew kind of road comics and I saw them and it, it totally scared me. And it seemed like something that was inherently unsafe. It just seemed very lonely and hard. And I, I thought, well, I don't, I don't think that's something I could tolerate. Yeah. And I had friends who did it and would call me from the road, like crying. And so I just kind of like thought I have to make money doing something else and like make this, you know, my like creative outlet. Yeah. So I haven't done, I mean, I've done like shows, uh, you know, New York and the Bay area, but a lot of times that's, it's been when I've been visiting people. And um, so comedy hasn't been like, uh, I haven't looked at it as a source of income. I think it's really hard if you're a comic who relies on that for money and you have to go out on tour and you have to, you know, take whatever gig you can. That's right. That's right. If you do full time, you know, this, this fear that you just mentioned, you said it seemed hard and difficult, like well, hard and lonely. Well, it's definitely both of those things because I've toured, I've toured by myself. I, I don't think I've ever really toured with anybody else. I've mostly just toured by myself. Um, and it's hard. It's lonely. It's definitely hard. You're just like by yourself. You just kind of, waiting all day, like just kind of twiddling your thumb, like waiting for the the show time to show up so then you can get dressed and, you know, show up. But have you ever done any of the casinos or anything, Solange? No, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. And I'll be honest, a part of me feels like I'm not a real comic because oh, I'm not. No, no, no. I was thinking of an imposter syndrome. <laughs> well, I know that's a, that's a, like, I think that is a real, um, comic issue you know who how what qualifies you when are you a real comic and I feel like I haven't had a lot of these experiences but I heard so much about them and just thought like that's not fun and I've always had this other career in advertising that they yeah. well so um I mean don't get me wrong I would love to make money and do comedy that seems really fun but it's as you know it's really hard to get those gigs and it's a yeah. um it's a hustle it's a hustle yes I mean you know, Solange, I talk about this a lot on my live streams, but like for the past two years, I'm not exaggerating. I've been putting in about a hundred hour weeks. That's what I do. That's how I'm out of work. Stand up. Stand up, yeah. producing. Like I don't really stop between writing, producing, and performing. That's about that's about the kind of hours that I've been putting in because that's the amount of hustle that it takes to try to become full time and get paid full-time as a comic i mean it's a lot of work you know my brothers uh, make really good money uh they're very well for, they do very well for themselves and my, one of my brothers was like yeah i just put in my 40 hours and you know i make my money and then i go home and i don't think about this stuff he goes but it's for you it's not like that i'm like no we, you know as comics we are like working all for me anyways i'm like working all the time because i'm always creating projects 
I'm all, never relying on just one thing. I'm always relying on like multiple things. I have multiple things going on at the same time because if this thing falls through, you have still have other two, three things going on. Yeah, and you're a really good comic, and you're oh, right. you're out there everywhere, and I'm super impressed. Oh, uh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a really hard job, and it takes everything. Yeah, absolutely. So, how long have you been doing comedy for? Where you're like, I've been consistently doing comedy for X number. Of years. Um, Oh my God. It's so hard to say because I started so long ago and then I didn't do it for like 10 years. And then it's been, it was about eight years ago that I, no, wait, eight. Yeah. It was about eight or nine years ago that I started doing it again. And then it just kind of like snowballed and I had shows and I just got kind of in the groove of it. And, um, you know, it all kind of culminated in my album that I, um, taped in um or it's a, it's on spotify now it's just audio yeah uh in 2018 and then like all that material from like the previous um six seven years were all <laughs> like on that and um and then i yeah i've been doing shows and stuff but um that that's been like the main bulk i think i think the comedy i did before in my 20s was like kind of the um you know, like getting my feet wet. I think it took me like five years to even figure out what was going on here. Like, what is this thing sure. we're doing? You know, just getting on. I mean, I think it takes a long time personally yeah. to have yeah. your voice. And um, absolutely. And then this year, obviously, the past since um, the world uh, shut down, I have been not doing it as much, but I, I have done, I have done a lot of zoom shows and I've actually kind of gotten consistently going to like at least one mic a week and doing like maybe a show every other week. Well, wow. I mean, I mean, for you, you know, you said that you also have a world in advertising, right? Is that mm -hmm. your kind of pretty much persistent, consistent gig that you've been doing? Um, it has not always been consistent because I didn't want it to be, but it's like, I have been able to find consistent work. So, um, that has like supported me. You know, yeah, you know, Solange, every time I watch you and every time I've watched you perform, you know, I always get the feeling I'm like, she's been doing this for a while. Like you always like, you know, what the hell you're doing when you get up there. But I, what I wanted to ask you was, you know, some of the shows that you've done, like, or I guess most of the shows that you've done throughout these years, like how much, how much different do you think a female comics life is than a male comics life when they're Oh my God. I mean, so I think that, um, I'm gonna take my glasses off. I think that things since the Me Too movement in 2016, um, I think things shifted. I won't say profoundly, but they shifted a little in terms of like at least male comics were like, oh, you know, like before that I was always, my whole platform has always been like feminist jokes and what it's like to be a woman in the world. And I felt like some crazy, you know, like weirdo lady, you know, uncool, very uncool. And I'm, I was fine with that. I was like, I'll be uncool, but it was very like, um, Com female comics being sexy and talking about them, you know, being kind of yeah. provocative, which sure. I never wanted to do that kind of material. I mean, I think there's a place for it, but like, it felt like that was everywhere. And, and I felt like really weird, but the male comics I was around and I mean, I'm sure it's the same for you. Usually you're one of two women in a room and it's like <laughs> all dudes. And they were tolerant, which is probably yeah. not even like the kindest thing to say, but they were tolerant of me, but I just kind of said what I had to say. And, um, but it did, it did feel like after 2016 that my material did not seem weird anymore. It seemed actually more mainstream and, um, yeah, there's a slight shift, but I won't say that. I mean, I still, to be honest, I find a lot of the, I can't even believe what I tolerated in the rooms in terms of like the things men would say about women, you know, and that's like people, audiences laugh at and they appreciate. Um, what, just, what's some of the wildest shit that you've heard 
come out of male comics mouth. Oh like, my God. It's like, where do I? So I have a blog that um, I've had for 20 years and um, I wrote so many blog posts and I mean, they're still up. You have to like search for them, but I was just raging. All my rage was coming out in blo- in blogs and um, I would, you know, go to a micro show and have an experience and then write about it the next day. And um, I remember one time I was at this like small open mic. I don't even, I was forcing myself to be there because I was like, I have to work, you know, I'm a real comic. And it was like five people. And one of the comics was talking about a prostitute and how and beating her up. I don't even remember the exact, like it was like really violent. And I just got up and left. And I remember getting like all these apologies, you know, like messages apologizing and, um, you know, apologies from who apologies from the comic, from the com from probably the producer or the host, you know, who like, you know, booked it. And, but, um, but yeah, I, I, it's like a lot of violence towards women. And I guess it's like, there's this credo in comedy that says that, and it's the whole free speech, you know, you should say whatever. And somehow it applies more to racist and sexist rhetoric than it does to a reaction to that rhetoric. Okay. That's when free speech is no longer okay is when you like respond to it because you're right. silencing the white male. Um, so, so I kind of got into a thing where I just said, you know what, if anything, and, and especially like in the last, um, even though after the Me Too movement, things shifted, I noticed in the last few years, I was hearing a lot more racist jokes that I had not heard, like, you know, like anti-Asians and just really flagrantly racist that would have been considered taboo like 10 years ago. And um, so I was just like, I'm just going to call it out in my set, you know, yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm not going to let it slide. And so I got in the habit of doing it. And it's funny because I think I... I felt scared at first and then it, it got to the point where I don't even scared. I don't care what anyone thinks about me. I don't care what the comic. I mean, in a lot of these, but like, I, I'm not going to tolerate a, being in a room with a racist comic. I don't care like how uncool I look. And that totally made, that helped my confidence and my finding my voice, my ability to like, just be a comic and say what I think. Um, but it's still the, the underlying, it's like if you challenge that like white male, it's like that, it, that's still considered like you're, you're doing something bad or you're uncool or you're not fitting, sure. in, you're not going with the flow. I do notice that. Um, and I credit Trump with uh, <laughs> all of this. Sure. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question. It did. You know, I, uh, uh, no, it did. And thank you for uh, sharing that and, you know, pointing that out. It's interesting how you said that the the fact that you, when you just stop caring about uh, the fact that, you know, that you're going to look uncool, that it just, it just empowered you because I feel like what you did is you removed the fear. You were just like, I'm not gonna put my, like, bind myself because of fear. What I feel like a lot of comics do, a lot of, especially female comics, they get terrified mm-hmm. you know, when they see this kind of stuff or if it's just one of them, you know, at a show, at a mic, it doesn't matter. They feel like, oh, my God, all, everybody's going to gang up on me and I'm not going to be able to say my piece and, you know, I'm going to look uncool. I'm not going to get booked again or whatever. You know, there's a lot of diff- different repercussions that come with standing up and speaking out. And it's interesting. I feel like the Me Too movement has helped comedy a little bit. But not a lot. Don't give it too much credit. I agree. Not a lot. Not at all. Like, I mean, you still have male comics saying some crazy, raunchy shit. Like, I was doing a show in Vegas, um, and I got booked literally, like, last minute. It's called Dirty at 1230. It's a really fun show. It's a fun, fun, fun show. It's, it's like, 400 people. um, You know, uh, it's a great show. The the booker is a nice guy, uh, I think. Uh, But uh, he... um, I, I got booked on the show, and, um, you know, it, it's interesting when you show up. I, a, I was the only woman on the lineup. Um, and B, after I did my set, which I fucking murdered, uh, you know, I walk up. <laughs> I fucking rock that show, and I get off, and uh, the host of the show goes, oh, I thought that that bitch was a terrorist. 
like, after your set, you right after your set, right after yeah. my set, when I when I just fucking killed. Like, like, did you want to like take me down? Like, did you want to because you were jealous? I made you insecure. Like, what happened? What was that need that you had that you had to call me a fucking terrorist? He's like, I thought that bitch was a terrorist. I was like, motherfucker. I mean, obviously he was totally threatened by you and your set. I mean, that's that's what I see now. And it that's all it is, is total jealousy. Because if you were a white man who just did the same old whatever, women are bitches, you know, hate my girlfriend, he would just be like, isn't he hilarious? Everyone give it up. That's, yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, my God. He pulled his dick out. Oh, my God. Amazing. <laughs> So talented. Oh, I, I never thought a man would so find So edgy. Me. So, oh. you know, I yeah, know. So original. <laughs> I mean, but the thing is, Mona, what I realized is that I I just decided I take it for granted now that that's the status quo. And then once I kind of internally accepted that, it's like there's this freedom of like, and not saying that you should accept it, that that's okay, not to make it okay, but it was this freedom of like, wow. I don't need any of these guys' approval. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't care. They're all idiots. And That's right. I I mean, I won't, I don't even care to name names. Um, but like, I don't respect Bill Maher. I don't respect, I don't care. You know, that culture, it's like, I. it doesn't mean anything to me. Whatever, you know, power they have in the world is fine. But that to me, honestly, that's when I felt like I became like came into myself as a comic and a writer. And I was like, wow, I feel free. You know, no one can take me down. You know, someone calls me whatever they call women or call you terrorist or crazy or, you know, I don't know. I, I can find, you know what I mean? It doesn't have power. And I don't know if that's, it's also a product of getting older, but it's also just realizing and, and also doing the work of being at shows and mics and saying yep. that. I don't know. I mean, I haven't, I, I don't, sometimes I wonder like, well, what would I be? Because I talked to one comic, I really wanted to get on late night and do a set. And he said, he's a white male, successful, very funny comic. And he said, I had to sit down and write a late night set and like what they would want to see in a late night set. And that bummed me out because I was like, I don't know if I want to write a late night set. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is that, you know? I mean, maybe I can write some of those, whatever. I do write dating jokes and, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, I, I think there might be a, a definitely a, a huge ceiling to your, um, you know, once you, if you really enter like the freedom of, of expressing who you really are in comedy. Yep. Uh, James said, uh, James said, do these male comics put out these inappropriate jokes in order to get a negative response on purpose? Sometimes. I think, I think the negative stuff that they, the inappropriate jokes is to be just like me and um, Solange were just saying to be edgy. Like, oh, I'm edgy. I'm saying I'm like inappropriate. Oh, you know, I'm I'm brave. I'm brave that I can make these inappropriate jokes and make you laugh. And yeah, it's freedom of speech. You can't stop me from saying this. I feel like that's where it comes from a place of real ignorance and pride. It's, it's a genre of saying the things other people won't say, which is really code for the things other misogynist racist people are wanting to say. Um yeah, I don't know how much courage it takes to say that. But yeah, the, the question is, do they want to get a negative reaction? And I would say yes. There's a lot of, like, that whole shock culture is very long standing, <laughs> And just say the thing that will, you're not, that makes you inappropriate. Um, which, you know what, all comics do to a degree. Yep. But I feel like calling out those people is the inappropriate thing to do in comedy. And that's like when I realized like, wow, um, I can do that and no one can stop me. <laughs> you know, um, I, I don't know. 
I feel like this, um, the question that James just asked, he said, do they do inappropriate jokes in order to get a negative response? I think they just do these inappropriate jokes to get a response, whether it's negative or positive. I mean, it's rather, I think a lot of comics think in, think in terms of like, it's better to have some kind of reaction than no reaction at all. So if you're completely bombing or if your set sucks or you never really take the time to put in the good writing and put in smart writing, then yeah, you're probably going to suck and then you start saying, making inappropriate jokes just to get some kind of reaction rather than silence. What do yeah, you think? I agree. And, and also people do laugh at those jokes. I mean, I'm always surprised sure. like, wow, people, people, they get, they do get a reaction for sure. whatever reason. I, I don't like it, but other people do sometimes. Yeah, when this guy, uh, when I did my set uh, and the host was just like, I thought she was a terrorist. I mean, there was a big laughter about that. Right. The audience reacted to that. You know, I almost like, I almost waited for him to come off stage and just walk up to him and be like, motherfucker, don't you ever fucking call me that. Like, a <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I wish you had. <laughs> I, I feel like, I, Solange, I have gotten into a few fights. Uh, shows. Uh, I love it. I, you know what? I totally like the thing is with comedy, though, you I can do something, something funny. Like ripping someone is actually funny to a lot of people. So if you have yeah. the courage to do it, it's like funny and it it's satisfying. I've um, told I've told quite a few people to fuck off right to their. <laughs> I had this one comic, uh, you know, I produce shows, I'm a producer, uh, and like, you know, I put in a lot of work in, you know, promoting the shows, the advertising, I mean, all of it costs a lot of money, a lot of work, and this one uh, comic literally canceled on me, like, 30 minutes before the show's supposed to and just making some bullshit excuse, right? Oh, I can't come, I'm busy, blah, 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 I'm this, I'm that, and I'm just like, uh, and I'm like, you know, you could just be a professional, and just be like, I'm sorry, you know, I messed up or I'm this and that. And, you know, can I make it up to you? I apologize. Can we reschedule? Right? I would accept that more than you coming up with these bullshit excuses and thinking that I'm a fucking fool, that I can't see through them. And he was just like, he's like, I don't know what it is that you want me to do. I was like, I don't need you to do anything. I was like, but I will tell you, you are the biggest fucking cunt I've ever met in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But it's hilarious when you say it. He's like, I'm so glad I'm not doing the show. I'm like, bitch, I'm glad you fucking canceled. Now fucking kill yourself. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> was it a guy or a girl? It was a guy. I was a guy. I, I think I'm a little bit more compassionate towards ladies than I am towards guys. I mean, for to be fair, you know, uh, there have been female comics that have not been uh, less, than, less than awesome to work with. But it's mostly guys. It's not. And so I, I, I need to point out, it's not just white guys. It's just dudes in general. There's a level of cockiness. There's a level of, like, I'm the fucking hottest shit. Because for guys, you know, for them, like, if they make a girl laugh, they're getting laid. For us, if I make a guy laugh, I may, I may get laid, I may not. I mean, it's not. I, 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 I mean, I always wonder. I think, like, the motivation for women to do comedy is very different than for guys. Like, I do think for a lot of guys, it's to be a rock star, to get laid, to be the the top to win the pissing contest or the dog fight. And, um, you know, my desire has always been to get up there and share my perspective and to like, and that was such a big drive for me. And it's a hard thing to do. And it's kind of a crazy thing to do. You're getting on stage in front of people by yourself and jokes. And, um, and, but I've always felt like, with women, I sometimes wonder, like, yeah, or it, or sometimes it's a lot of the desire to get famous, I think, motivates people. Um, but, yeah, I, I do think it's a different – we're coming – I'm coming at it from a different place. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think I think you're right. I mean, for, for guys, you know, if, if a female comic makes people laugh, then it's immediately competition to a dude because it's like, mm-hmm. yo – Traditionally, that's been my role. So now there are female comics coming in. Like, I think a lot of comics think, like, well, female comics can get laid anytime. For me, I gotta work. I gotta tell jokes and make a woman laugh. And, and then I become a rock star and then I get laid. For a woman, you can just get laid. Why do you gotta tell jokes on top and giving me comedy? I mean, it, it does feel like 
sometimes I feel like I'm almost taking away from my appeal, you know, from God and then got in a man's eyes, like, you know, like, it's just like, oh, that's an annoying part of you that I'm tolerating. I'm just accepting that. But that's not who I, re- you know, that's not who I really like. And I finally realized, I was like, that's not what I, the kind of guy I want to be with. But I have felt that way in relationships. Like, have, you, have you ever, have you ever had like a date come to watch you at a show and then later been like, sorry, I can't go out with you? <laughs> Um, no, but I have dated male comics. <laughs> oh, that's the one! I know. Oh, uh, no yeah. judgment. I mean, look, we, you know. No, I, I, you I've know. never, I've never, I, from day one, has been a zero comic dating policy. Oh, I love it. So wise, so wise. Um, no, I feel, um, I mean, I have dated guys who are into it, too, who thought it was really cool. Um, yeah. I think um, probably, I don't know, some guys do think it's cool. So I, it's just, you know, it, it is an insecurity, I think, um, or insecure part of humans that make them want to do something like this. Yeah. Um, but it also does take a lot of courage, too. So I'm not going to, like, not comics because it, it is a hard thing to do no matter what. But okay. but, um, but, uh, but they I, also, but male comics also don't have to perform at a comedy club or go on tour and constantly have to worry about, oh my God, is it some creepy person going to come and try to sneak into my room? Or like I was, I was touring and I was doing, um, I was doing shows in Nevada, Arizona, and I forget where else. And I was literally just jumping in my car and just driving to all these different places and, you know, doing uh, performing. Um, And I remember this one show that I was doing in Arizona it was a casino show and this really super creepy guy was sitting in the front and then he, you know, he loved my set, this and that. And they walked up to me after the show. He was like, you know, my name is so-and-so, this and that. Boy, where can I follow you? So I was just like, yeah, you can follow me on Facebook and da 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 And then um, I go to the, you know, the other comic who was also on tour with me. And I was like, all right, man, let's go grab something to eat. And this dude, like, was following us. He was trying to find out which room I was staying in. I mean, it was, like, creepy, right? Then he was messaging me while I was at dinner. He was like, you know, if you want to hang out, you know, I'm still here. I'm waiting for you. And I was like, what the fuck? I had to ask security to walk me to my, my, you know, to my, to my room. Like, a male comic, male comic would be like, oh, my God, some chick wants to come to my room. My dad, please do come on over. Yeah. Like, it's not like that. You, you would know? have fulfilled your goal, your comedy goal. If you were a guy, you would have like been, Oh, like tonight <laughs> I strike it rich. For sure. You know, I once uh, was sitting at a very big comedy club I read that I shall not name and another comic uh, and a comic was sitting there. He's a middle Eastern comic. Uh, and uh, he works a lot. He said, you know, he's a decent human being, I think. Uh, and, uh, he was sitting there and he was talking to another comic and I overheard the conversation. No, I wasn't eavesdropping. I literally just overheard it. And he was like, yeah, man. He's like, I have a girlfriend, but you know, pussy on the road doesn't count. <laughs> according to the, the rule book, according to according, the comedy, according to the comedy yeah. rule book. Yeah. Look at that fucking page. Oh yeah. Look, it says right here. Pussy on the road doesn't count. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, I I feel like it's not just comedy though, Mona. I mean that the thing is women have to live with that. Just you know, walking down the street, just going to a restaurant, just doing anything in the world is like subjecting yourself to harassment. And um, you know, I it, it I don't know, I, I no one ever sits you down and says to you as a young person girl or young woman like you don't have to give the time of day to any male and that does not make you a bad person it does not make you a bitch even if you might be called that um and it takes like living you know a million decades to be like oh my god i don't have to talk to any of these people i can tell them to get the f away and that doesn't make me a bad person at all it just makes someone who take take care of herself um and that I think that's a lesson that like we just have to learn no matter if we're comics or if we're 
lawyers or doctors or because it's and I I did finally realize I was like why am I doing something that's so hard so male so competitive but I'm like hey if I wanted to be like a heart transplant surgeon same thing be right. surrounded by males telling dick jokes you know if I wanted to be like a oh rocket God. scientist same thing it's, right. it wouldn't be easier yeah if I wanted to be president of the United States like it won't be easier it's it's any field that has some power and it really speaks to the power that comedy does have mm -hmm. that like it is powerful, even though comics are a bunch of like broke, you know, they seem like a bunch of broke people, but there is broken, something broken. Broken. <laughs> yeah, broken, broken, but there is so much like power given to being a comic and like you are um, by yourself on a stage able to say whatever you want okay. so and it is because it does feel like if we wanted to be you know school teachers or librarians we would probably not be facing the same degree or something in the social services but it's this very male and very um coveted work um that we're aspiring to do and that's you know that's cool yeah uh, Richard, Hicks. Richard Hicks says, Solange, you dabble mm -hmm. in multiple artistic forms and you're awesome at all of them. Blog writing, playwriting, book writing, joke writing, storytelling, dance, drawing, etc. Do you have a favorite? P.S. You're both awesome. Thank you, Richard Hicks. Very good. Richard's very supportive. Um, and uh, do I have a favorite? Hmm. Uh, I am a playwright also, and oh, but my plays are very like it's a lot like my stand up, you know. Like if I have a play reading and the jokes don't go over, I feel like I bombed personally. So I have to cast good actors. So I feel like I love anything where I can sit there and hear the laughter from my work, whether it's stand up or whatever plays or you know, yeah, a TV script or anything. Um, so I think that's what I feel like I'm a, a real comic because it's like I'm addicted to the laughter. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I have a, uh, I have a protege, uh, female comic who's, uh, you know, I've kind of like become mentor to her. I'm also, she's also a really good friend. And, uh, one of the things I've noticed about her is that she's always worried about, oh my God, what's so-and-so going to say? And I don't want to rock the boat with so-and-so. Uh, and I see how that also limits you as an artist because you're always worrying about what other people are going to say. You're always concerned about, oh, my God, I want to make this joke because I'm going to offend so-and-so. And, you know, at some point, it goes back to the point that you were saying. You're like, I don't like Bill Maher. I don't care about Bill Maher. Like, I don't care. And I think one of the things that I've recently really come to accept, I've realized it for a long time, but I've really come to accept like uh, just what happened two days ago, right? With Capitol Hill and, you know, all, all the fucking terrorists that were trying to take over and destroy federal property. Um, you know, on MSNBC, uh, one of their main uh, straight, wild, white male newscast guy, he has his own show, I forget his name. And he was like going off, right? He was fucking pissed off and he was just letting his opinions fly. How fucked up this whole thing is. And, you know, if it was BLM or Antifa, they would have fucking, you know, shot them dead in the streets. And, you know, it was going on and on. And the fascinating thing about what I was listening to him was just like, you know, um, I have the exact same thing that he's saying, right? I thought the same things. I said those same things. And, you know, but his anger is more accepted and respected versus that same shit coming out with that same velocity out of my mouth would be looked at, oh my God, why are you so angry? Oh, you're one of those feminists. Or if it's coming out of a man mouth of like a person of color, a you know, male person of color, oh my God, he's so angry, he's so aggressive. And it's interesting how, you know, two people can say the exact same things and one person is accepted and respected for it while the other person is you know, disrespected and, you know, and told all kinds of labels, right? That you're angry or this and that. Have you ever done or experienced where you went on, on, you know, and you got shitted on for making a comment or doing jokes about feminism and then somebody else came and did it, a dude, and they were like, oh my God, he's so, <laughs> old. he is amazing. Um, I can't think of anything off the, like, off the cuff, but I do think that um, 
I don't know. So uh, there, there are a lot of comics where I'm like, I don't, I don't get the hype, you know, but they're, they're, you know what I mean? Whatever they do gets, yeah, yeah like a lot of applause sure. um, from the world in general. Um, I mean, I feel like I'm very, one thing I will say about women that we don't, it's, and I'm actually personally guilty of this and I have struggled with it, but it, like being an ambitious woman, whereas like if you're a guy and you're just like, I want to be the best comic and have a show, it's like, cool, you know, look at him go. And <laughs> if a woman does that, it's like, what is, I know, <laughs> if a woman does, it's like, what's wrong with her? Does she not have friends, you know? Right. Is she, why it's is she like, so aggressive? Why is she so aggressive? I've gotten that. I've had dudes tell me to chill the fuck out. Yeah, they told me. I'm like, you chill the fuck out. Don't fucking tell me. Because <laughs> <Yeah. me." laughs> oh, I, I also grew up with like four older brothers. So I yeah. think I've just kind of adopted this attitude of fuck me, fuck you. You know, because I love it. I, we've been telling each other to fuck off as ever since we were kids as siblings, so maybe that's why. Yeah, I didn't have an older brother, but my dad is kind of like a brother, <laughs> so like I, I think he kind of had that energy with me that made me kind of like screw you. I'm gonna do what I want. I'm gonna say what I want. If this bothers you. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> you know, like and for whatever reason, I was allowed to have that kind of dynamic with him. Um, so I think. I do think there has to be something in our backgrounds that allows us to tolerate, you know, an experience where you're just like around dudes all the time and you have a way to deal with it, whether it's like, you know, talking back at them and being like, yeah. fuck you or being like, oh, I didn't like what you said. Let me talk about it now, you know, and dissect it on stage. And, you know, and I think the thing we have in common is we're not like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to try to flirt with you now and make you like me. Cause that, I don't know. I don't think oh, that. Ew. <laughs> yeah, gross. No, people fucking no. I mean, I, I have like not the best taste in men, but fuck that stand-up comics. I ain't dating no goddamn stand-up. <laughs> yeah. I have enough problems for them. Fuck that. <laughs> I love it. Um, no, I mean, there's been some nice guys, stand but still, yeah, they're stand-up comics, and they um. They do not want to be with someone who's compete, you know, who's a competition in their field. That that much is clear um, to me after my experience. Um, no, but that's, that's a negative. Yeah. No. Have you have you ever had uh, like male hecklers? Uh, what which I'm sure you've had, but have they ever been like then first heckle you and then after the show walk up to you and like saunter their way and be like, hey. <laughs> I'm buying you a drink, and you're like, "Why don't you go fuck yourself, huh?" Yeah. Um. Have I had that? Well, honestly, like any kind of heckling I've experienced, I actually kind of like it because it just <laughs> throws off your like set. But it's like, you know, I don't know. Like getting into that relationship can sometimes be really fun because it's like I don't know. I don't. It's like having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you know, I don't know. It can create like cool, like excitement and it can be funny. Oh, listen, I love, um, I love it when, you know, I'm especially like intimate shows and somebody's heckling you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the absolute joy yeah. of destroying yeah. them. The absolute joy uh, of absolutely blowing them into smithereens. It's just so much fun. And I think that's, I think. I think every comic has a masochistic, maso sadistic side to it. Masochistic, yeah, no, pseudo masochistic for sure. I uh, I was doing a show. Uh, I got uh, brought out to uh, DC to perform at uh, at a at a big university, which you know we'll just leave it as is. And then I I performed there, and then uh, in the evening I got asked to come and headline these two shows, uh, and I was like, oh cool. So I go to this one place, packed. Headlined it, had a great time. And right across the street from it, I go to this other place. Now, my friend who was there is a is a tall dude. He's a tall, big black dude, and he's awesome. And he's just the biggest sweetheart. Like just the kindest, loveliest human being. So I go and I'm about to do a set and um I'm standing in the back and um it's a little bit of like a lighter room, and these two girls 
are sitting in the front table. It's not a lot of people. It's two ladies sitting in the front, and they're heckling every comic that's going up on stage. So I'm looking around, and I'm just like, yo, is nobody going to say nothing to this? What am I? Somebody's got to shut these bitches out. Like, <laughs> shut the fuck out. Like, you know, we're out here doing our work. Like, if you don't want to be here, just go to another bar. Like, what the fuck? So I didn't quite realize that um, um, that uh, one of them was gay and her girlfriend was at the bar and she was a lot like, uh, she was like more butch than, and the other one was femme. And um, I remember stepping up on stage and anytime I was about to tell a joke, she would interrupt me. And she's like, I can't hear you. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I was like, if you keep quiet, you'll hear what I have to say. <laughs> Me. You keep interrupting me. So, you know, sh- like shut it. So I'm about to tell her the joke. I was doing a um I was doing a Bill Cosby joke. Okay, I do this Bill Cosby joke that does well. So I was doing the Bill Cosby joke about how how why his eyes are fucked up. Uh you know, one of his eyes is really fucked up. Why is it why is that it? And I was doing a joke and she just stopped me. She's like, rape isn't funny. And I was like, <laughs> nobody said rape is funny. Like I never said those things. I was like, all right. I was like, I'm going to give you two options. Either you're going to shut the fuck up or get the fuck out. So what's it going to be? Right? So everybody in the back starts clapping. Right? All the comics. So I start, I'm like, fuck you guys. I'm like, you guys should have handled these bitches before. Why do I have to handle this shit? Long story short, the, the, uh, the butch girlfriend walked up to me on stage, put her forehead on my forehead, and started physically pushing me back. Oh, my God. Get into a physical fight with me. What <laughs> UFC and boxing requires you to be physically like threatened and assaulted, you know, possibly at a fucking job while go- telling goddamn jokes. Like, what job requires that? I think so. I have like a, I just have like a personality where people see me as a nice girl, you know, and I think. Like the things I say are not that nice, but I think it's time <laughs> for great. that to register. So mm-hmm. there's like a disconnect between like how I come across and sure. the words coming out of my mouth. Sure. So I don't feel like people really realize they're being insulted or <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> so like in some ways I kind of feel like I get away with a lot. I actually am surprised that I'm able to get away with I'm trying to think of a joke that like um, I have just like jokes that I'm just like, wow, I'm really surprised I can tell this joke and not get like harassed after the show. Is it Um, is it a more of a dig at guys kind of joke? Like what kind of joke is it? um, Well, there's it's like several jokes. um, uh, Like, okay, I have this joke about auditioning and like. Um, like throwing out and like auditioning to be like a wife mother type and yeah. just improvising, like throwing out. Cause you know, when you audition, you tend to like improvise. Yeah. And, and so like my improvisations are just like, I'm just a servant of the patriarchy and like um, football exploits minorities to entertain white people. Like these were like the improv lines because yeah. it was like a football, you know, it's like a wife, like um, of a, yeah, like who's like whose husband is, does something with football. Yeah. And like that joke, I felt like, like, I don't know if people really realize that I was saying those things, you know what I mean? Cause like mainstream type people will laugh at it. And I'm like, you don't agree with this, but like, <laughs> maybe they do. Maybe they yeah. do. Maybe, maybe now that, you know, just like you said, in the age of, you know, uh, me too and time's up, you know, those conversations have not become mainstream when they were before considered alt or, oh, my God, you're like a feminist kind of comedian. But now it's like, no, yeah. that's not mainstream. Like, now you have male comics trying to, who are not fucking feminists, and we know that they're not fuck are going out of their way to write jokes, to be like, I'm so woke. I'm so pro-feminism. And you're just like, motherfucker, you was trying to grab a titty the other day. Get the hell out of here. I wish, yeah, I wish, like, Louis C.K. would just be on it instead of just, well, he's just going into, like, leaning into his old self, but, like, just be honest about, like, wow, this is really confusing. I have been this, like, asshole douche, and I can't do that anymore. Like, that would be very interesting comedy to me. 
if they were so honest about the experience of what it's like, because you can see it in their eyes. They're just like, what's happening? (laughs) What? I can't pull my dick out and jerk (laughs) out. When I pull my dick out, like it's, it's like shocking, you know, and it's like to write, write about that. Yeah. (laughs) Try to be more of an asshole write about like what's really happening. I would find that super interesting. Like write about just, I think, you know, honesty, like, you know, uh, look, human beings are social animals, right? Just like animals rely strictly on their instincts and their gut. Like we human beings also have this animal instinct, right? And we know when somebody's being truthful and when someone is, somebody's not, right? And I think as comics, we know that when you get up on stage, you have what, like maybe three seconds, three to five seconds to connect with the audience. I mean, that's how quick you have to build a rapport. Otherwise you lose the audience. I mean, that's the truth. And that's strictly just animal instincts coming in, right? People can feel when you're, you're stepping on stage, you're being genuine, you're being honest, you're being vulnerable. People immediately you know, sense that you don't even have to say nothing. They just feel it. They're just like, Oh my God, this person is coming in or they have a vibe or they have an energy. I can just feel like, what is it? What's happening with them? But uh, you know, when Louis CK comes out and he's just like, so up on my dick up. What's the big deal? Anyway. Um, like, oh. So I'm not a comic who pulls my dick out. That's who I am. And, it's, and he's kind of like a little bit of a mini Trump, you know, and his fans like, like that. They're like, yeah. Oh, oh. Solange, don't even get me fucking started. I recently, sadly, was, uh, you know, on, on like a, a dinner with this couple and the husband, uh, they live in Bel Air. They have a lot of money. You know, he's a stockbroker, whatever the fuck. And he's like, I'm a pro capitalist. And in my head, I was like, douchebag. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Uh, and then he's like, I don't understand what the big deal was, why Louis C.K. lost his. I mean, he didn't do something that bad. And I was like, oh, shit, Solange. My owner, fucking Tita, just fucking came the fuck out. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I was like, do you have two daughters? Don't you have two daughters? He goes, yeah. I'm like, okay, so let's say that your two daughters are the singing duo that are opening act for Louis C.K. And then while they're sitting in the green room, Louis C.K. comes in, shuts the door and goes, hey, ladies, you don't mind if I put my dip, put my pull my dick out and jerk off in front of you. And they're like, oh my God, no, Louis, just kidding. No, guess what? He does pull his pants down and starts jerking off and is standing against the door because they, he wants them to watch because he doesn't want them to leave. How would you feel about that? And he's like, well, I won't like it. Oh, you don't like it when it comes home. But everybody else's daughter can go fuck themselves. Is that it? And that's how a lot of their followers think. As, it yeah. doesn't happen to me. It does, as almost doesn't happen to me. It doesn't happen to my sister or whatever. It can happen to whatever other woman. I don't care. I think they think like, well, they could have just left. You know, the hostageness of it does not register. He's standing, he's, he's standing against the door. What, like, what are you going to do? Smack his dick and then try to push him out of the way? Like, what are you supposed to he's do? Their employer, too, which is like. He's also their employer. That's correct. Right. He's going to. And listen, let's be honest, Juan. That singing duo, which we know who they are, have not worked since. Like he almost like buried their careers. Yeah. And and also like that whole experience of coming out and speaking out is like you get death threats. I mean, their lives were ruined. You That's know, right. they they're they're they feel threatened all the time. And it's like it, I think about that all the time. It's it is actually dangerous to be a female comic. Like you are <laughs> Taking your life in your own hands because someone will th- could threaten to kill you based on what you say. And like, and that's like for writers or female politicians, like other, but that's, you know, it, it is a very courageous thing to do. Yep. I mean, for us, it's like the, the danger is like right there, right? It, it's instant, right? For writers, you submit stuff, you get drafts, you go sit down and write, and you know, then you then it goes published or whatever. For us, it's instant. The moment we step on stage, the moment we say something someone doesn't like, they might be waiting for us right as we get off stage to punch our lights out or to follow us to our car or like to threaten us, you know. Um, I know uh, you don't have to name any names if you don't want to, but have you ever experienced any established comics or established people like trying to like, you know, like, physically harass you or sexually harass you and trying to say like inappropriate things where you're just like, I cannot believe this established person will say or do something like this. This is crazy. 
Well, first of all, I would I would always believe that this established person could say and do whatever um, at this point in life. Um, I think I even though I did date a comic, I think in general, I just had like my wits about me all the time. Like I don't really and I also don't see them as rock stars either. Um, So I I just don't get into that situation. (laughs) <laughs> Axelon, why not? <laughs> I, I just don't. So I, I just honestly, I don't think I have been in that situation where somebody, not in comedy and other parts of my life, but um, I think it, I've always treated it as kind of like I'm going into the, you know, wild jungle here, and you know, I'm, I'm not gonna like. I, I don't see it as like a bastion of sanity or emotional stability. Um, which you shouldn't because it's not. So that has helped. Like, but you, uh, have you ever experienced things like in comedy clubs or things like that where you're just like, wow, you know. uh, I feel like in comedy clubs, everyone's just thinking about their set and thinking about getting on stage and um, yeah, and getting high or whatever. I just, it's like, I am so, I feel like a square just like, I, I don't care. I, I, maybe I'm just like too old, but even I started when I was really young and I, and even then I was sort of just like, um, yeah, I don't think, I, I think it always felt like pretty, um, kind of a little bit of a, a wild card kind of environment to right. put it lately. And right. you're in like bars and drinking environments. And sometimes it's fun. And a lot of times it's great and really fun, but it is definitely um it's a hazardous yeah. job. It comes to <laughs> hazard, right? <laughs> you know, where I go to find like peace, you know. <laughs> it's like yeah. where I go to express myself and that's that's I, what it's for. I think every female comic that ever steps into an open mic should be given a brochure of like, this is a hazardous job. These yeah. are the things to expect when you enter, you know. Uh, oh God, that would be such a great book. Like that would be. Why is it a you comic see, yeah, you will see an unsolicited dick pic. Like that's <laughs> just the thing. Um, you know. You will be given feedback on your set. When you didn't even ask for it. Yeah. <laughs> you you not, tags that aren't funny at all. By and, a non-comic, which is even worse. By someone who's been doing it a week or, right. yeah. Like, let me let me give you a tag for that. And you're like, I've been doing comedy for 10 plus years. You just got here. Like, what? I know. I know. I, yeah. have, I usually have, uh, not usually, but I, I'll have sometimes comics uh like not even comics audience member walk up to me and be like that was really funny but you know what would be funnier are you talking to me (laughs) what would be funnier i'm like you can stop right there i was like if you want to do it you get up and you do it have a nice day i um yeah no i think i probably more than being sexually harassed i've been harassed by uh comedy critique you know more than anything i've gotten so much of that what, and, like, what's one of what's what what are some of the wildest shit you've heard where you're like are you kidding me um uh, i think guys will just be like you know and this is not just in stand-up but also in playwriting oh that's just not i just wouldn't watch something like that or i am um, you know <laughs> i would never laugh at that i would never think that's funny <laughs> it's like and it's like wow i really that's okay i wasn't writing it for you personally <laughs> like you were you were never even part of my thought for it like, you're not my audience to get the fuck out <laughs> you know, i i feel like that um yeah especially early on though but now i i think you know you get to a point where your energy is just like bye you know i'm not like making eye contact <laughs> i'm just like beeline for the door so i don't get like yeah, um, as much you know harassment as a, if I was like hanging around. Yeah, um, Andre. Which- Andre said so. Saying you're funny and cute is not good. No, you can totally say you're funny and cute, but it's different. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a guy walking up to you who's not a comic walking up to you and be like, "That was really funny," but you know what'd be funnier if you <laughs> yeah. and you're like, "What do you do again?" And he's like, "I drive Uber." You're like, "All right." I'm <laughs> yeah. 
or I'm or or somebody was just like, oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an attorney. You're just like, you have no business like letting me know what is funny. Like yeah. I do it day in and day out. What, what like what? Yeah, just you know what? That was funny. I enjoyed it. End of story. Right. <laughs> you're, you're like, that was funny. You enjoyed it. Oh, and and you're also cute. If you want to say that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank very you. flattering. Very flattering. Very I don't flattering. Really call them cute. I don't take it as an insult. Um, but yeah. yeah, you know, it's the condescending talking down to you like, oh, you don't know what you're doing. And, right. um, but you know, some of that might have been my own insecurity. Like I probably wasn't that confident. So I think that attracted a certain kind of person to come up to me and, you know, tell me, tell me how it is. This is how it is in comedy. And oh, God, way- me sensei. <laughs> yeah. Which I, though, I see them doing it to other people and I'm like, oh my God, you don't, <laughs> you know, you don't, but I can't tell someone that's their journey to, you know. Oh my God. Solange, about like two, three weeks ago, I was doing this online comedy competition. It was like such nonsense. I was the only woman on the lineup and where, what number did they put me up, Solange? Number one, that's what they, they I'm the only female on the lineup. And you put me up number one, which means I'm taking the bullet for the rest of the crew right now. Right. Which simply isn't fair, right? I mean, I all, the odds are already stacked up against me. Anyway, I did my set. I did really fucking well. And the comic who comes up after me goes, she inspired me to do my rape jokes, but I think uh, that's what I'm for today. Uh, I inspire you for Rachel? Never once have I mentioned anything about rape or anything like that. I inspired you. And all the time, everybody was laughing and having a good time. Uh, so I went in the comment box and I was like, wow, he looks so different without his without his KKK hoodie on. It, he looks <laughs> so different. I can barely recognize him. <laughs> that's the thing i feel like sometimes like when you say something like that in response it's like that was worth it thank you for making that asinine comment you set me up and it's like it's so gratifying so i finally was like you know what let them say whatever they want as long as i can come up after them that's the only thing if you're already off stage then it sucks because you're just like sitting there or you can just yell stuff out from the audience which i've done too <laughs> Like you heckled the, I heckled the oh, comic. Yeah. I just, I was like, I'm going to heckle. And I've done it. And oh my God, comics, when you're another comic heckling a comic, <laughs> oh, it's not a cool thing to do. But like, I'm like, I don't care. I'm not a comic. I'm not going to sit here and listen to that. So I'm, I guess my selfish creative instincts uh, rise above my uh, desire to be considered a cool comic. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be, a, who wants to be a cool comic? Like what, what's more asshole-ish than being a cool comic? I don't want to be, I, I want to be, uh, I want to be uh, smart, uh, you know, incisive, uh, compassionate, uh, good, uh, likable comic. That's it. That's all I care for. Yeah. I want to say the thing that needs to be said in the moment. Right. Um, and it's like, just be, just be honest about whatever is it that I'm saying. I'm not just getting up there and like, you know, you know, blowing up hot air people butts to for them to be like, Yeah, you should feel so good about yourself. It's just like no I know. I'm not doing that. Not well, doing that. I actually have to go. I have a Zoom um another okay. Zoom thing. Um you did mention that. All right, my friend. This was a lot of fun. Thank you very much for joining us. Where can people find you? Um, so I'm, um, on Twitter and Instagram, uh, Solange underscore here, H E R E as in Solange here. Um, and my website is SolangeCastro.com and all my information about my book and my play and my comedy. I also have a comedy, um, album available on Spotify called a journey of self-discovery that is available <laughs> um but this is really fun oh my god i can talk to you forever mona you're so funny i know you're so sweet thank you so much you're funny and you're talented and go do your thing on zoom i'll talk okay to you all right okay friend. take care all right that was Solange castro i'm waiting for my next comic to show up who is also a very talented very very funny comic but um she is uh i believe she's wrapping up I think like uh, Zoom also. I think we're all just doing Zoom shows and stuff. So I'm waiting for her. So I'm going to put myself on mute while I get in touch with her so she can log in.
Look at that. Look at that. All right, she's going to be joining. You guys, uh, some of the stories, I think, you know, uh, I was trying to refrain myself from uh, revealing some of the names because for us, it just gets a little tricky because we're just kind of put in this very strange place where people come out and say, you know, horrific mean things to female comics and you're, you're just like, all right, I'm just going to take a deep breath. I'm just going to suck it up. And, you know, I don't want to, like, rock the boat because somebody's going to get mad at me or I'm not going to get booked at so-and-so thing or or somebody's going to go and spread rumors about me or somebody's going to say shit about me. And I think that's, like, so such a big part of our existence as female comics because we're all, always, like, you know, there's always this thing in the back of our head. It's just like, oh, my God, I don't want to... I don't want to piss anybody off, but I think just like Solange and I think myself, I think when you do it for a long enough time, you're just like, fuck this. Like I'm exhausted. It's this, this business is hard enough. And then I got to worry about what other people think of me and I got to constantly please them. Like it's just too much. I, um, I had this one, uh, incident, uh, where I was, uh, doing a show in New York uh, and the host who is a, who was a South Asian comic actually, you know, so that's why I don't like to just take digs. I don't, I personally don't like to make digs just on white dudes because it's just, isn't fair. I mean, this kind of misogyny is just across the board. It isn't just white dudes. It's, you know, it's every ethnicity of man is doing this kind of bullshit in the comedy world. So it's just not fair that only white dudes get the brunt of it while all the other, you know, male comics of different ethnicities are doing the same kind of shit and getting away with it, but getting to hide behind the fact that they're saying, Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ethnic. So I won't do it. It's just like, no, you're still a fucking misogynist. Like you're still an asshole. So I'm still going to call you out. I remember doing this show in New York city. Uh, and, um, I went up there and I still had that set. I did it like a long time, like eight years ago or something. So I was, I was still fairly new to comedy at the time, but I was fucking murdering that night. I don't know what was happening. I was just on a roll. I was doing so good. And uh, the male comic, the South Asian male comic goes up after me, the host. And he goes, you know, he goes, Mona set made me really nervous because she killed so hard. I don't know if I can follow her. And, uh, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, what a what a sweet compliment. He's so sweet. So the next day I'm doing another show. It was like a series of shows that you were doing. Next day I'm doing a show uh, and I was just doing some new material. And uh, this comic sees me uh, and I go up and, and he's sitting in the audience, the same comic he wasn't hosting that night. And he sees me and I started getting heckled by this one male audience member. And the male comic gets up and starts applauding the heckler, the male heckler, because he was heckling me. So he can feel good about himself. Like imagine, imagine to be that fucking insecure that you have to, you know, demean a fellow female comic who hasn't done anything to you, you right? By taking sides with the fucking heckler. So that's some of the shit that we deal with. Anyways, I have uh, my very uh, talented second guest uh, that I'm very excited to have. Um, She has been on a lot of really cool stuff. I was actually reading her bio and um she has a video uh, on youtube called uh for this uh this channel called the real the real rejects uh it's what featured on buzzfeed's tasty channel and has over two million views uh my very talented friend cat alvarado how are you hi thank you for having me sorry for being a little bit late all good my friend traffic there's a, there's a fire <laughs> oh, oh lord there's a fire there's always a fire <laughs> Well, I uh, just had uh, Solange Castro. Do you know who she is? I don't think I, you know, I might have met her. She sounds familiar, but I don't, I'm not uh, close with her. Okay. So Solange was just on and we were just uh, talking about, uh, we were just talking about like what it's like to be a female comic, like a day in the life of a female comic and just like, like some of the stuff that you hear as female comics or go through that male comics never even have to consider or even think about. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm-hmm. Have you toured? Have you been on tour with other people? Have you toured around the country or kind of different states? So the touring I have done, I've been very fortunate to have done it with either a gay man or someone who I really, really trusted. (laughs) But that's because I've always gone into it like very skeptical because I've heard the story. So, you know, in anticipation of that, I always have tried to avoid people who I think might be a little bit sketch. I have like a a sixth sense. The reason I have a sixth sense is because of the years I've been doing comedy, I've been uh, harassed from time to time. And now I've learned how to kind of 
get the vibe. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. How long have you been doing comedy for now, Kat? Seven years. I can't wow. believe it. Wow, seven years. You've been doing comedy. And this harassment thing that you're talking about, like what are like just some of the things that, you know, male dudes have like male comics have said to you where you're just like, what? Oh my gosh. There's a couple. Okay. So the first time I ever went to the comedy store, this guy, he's like, I I still don't remember his name. He's like really tall, bald. I don't even think he does comedy anymore. And, um, thank God. Yeah. Huh? I said, thank God. Right. And so I said to, um, I was talking to him cause he was just back there and I was being friendly and I'm like, yeah, I live in Santa Barbara, but I was thinking about moving down here. And he's like, well, guess what? You might be a Santa Barbara 10, but you're in LA four. Like what? No, one, no one asked you, dude, first of all. And then he got like really up close to me and kind of like touched my, my midsection. Oh, which was strange. And I kind of pulled away. And then my friend, you know, got me out of that situation. Um, yeah. And then another time, the same, I think the second time I was there, the guy was there and he was, he like lifted up his shirt and he's like, check out my abs. Ew. And I was like, what? Ew. Why? Why? No one asked for that. No one. <laughs> What's God, going on here? Uh, you know what it is? Like comedy is such an insecure business to begin with. Oh and then you have like these super insecure folks, insecure dudes, I would say. So and, you know, and I was just mentioning that I'm not even going to just say white dudes. It's just dudes in general, right? Yeah. And then they, they come in all broken, broken with their fucked up shit. And they, because the business is already insecure, it makes them additionally insecure. So then they have to be like, well, you may be a Santa Barbara 10, but you're an LA 4. And you're just like, you're, you're like, I, I don't know what shithole you've come from, but you're still shitty. You were shitty there and you're shitty here. So they're damaged. They're damaged puppies. There is another one. And um, this is one, I won't say his name because he's kind of more or less well known, but I was opening for him or hosting. I was hosting for him last year. And uh, the last show of the weekend, he goes, um, you know, uh, every at the end, this is at the very end of a show. And I was supposed to come on afterwards um to just say like hey there is gonna be whatever on sunday so it's like this is gonna be a magic show tomorrow right and he goes and on the way out make sure you grab cat's tits in her ass <gasps> it's her favorite thing and he was he was drunk like he had had like several shots of whiskey on stage during his his hour-long headliner set and very fortunately the uh the manager of the club like was on top of it and i was kind of like look i can handle being harassed let's see let's see if it happens just so that i can get him in trouble and be like look what you did motherfucker so i was down to like go right out to the lobby and and like see if any drunk people would grab me just because i'm a shit starter right (laughs) um but the manager that's why that's why i like you (laughs) because i was like i want to i want to start a fight come on i will talk to you a bitch let's go see what happens (laughs) and um no the manager was like on top of it and they were like oh come here we have to have you guys sign your your w9s or your 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 little tax forms i gotta give you your checks and brought us over to the green room so that we couldn't go out to the lobby and then they didn't let us out of the green room until everybody had filed out wow which is so smart right it was a it was at a levity live and so that makes sense because they're that's a corporation like they could get sued if suddenly i got manhandled at the end of a show that's right Um, and it's i did try to ask for the tape of the of the show afterwards to get it from levity live just to have it yeah in case that guy ever like no they 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 were like oh sorry we didn't record it because you know what? Cover your own ass. They're covering their own ass. They know. Of course they, they are. Know. Of they course do. they are. You know, um, I, uh, uh, what's interesting is that you said that they, so the, was the guy in the same room as you Was your, when you're filling out the W-9 form? Yeah. The check thing? Oh, but yeah. is he apologizing to you or is that being brought up to be like, yo, don't ever fucking say that shit to her? Oh, or- no. He proceeded to then like hit on me and flirt with me the rest of the night. <laughs> yeah and did you tell him to just i don't know kill himself or something or no i you know sometimes i wish i was tougher but some in these moments when these things happen like 
the shit starter in me likes to see how far they'll take it. Like, right. I, like I'm just too much of a human observer. So unless I'm in like imminent danger, yeah, because yeah. if I really genuinely feel like I'm in danger, I will get out of the of situation. Of course, well, physically, like you can't, you know, unless you fucking do karate and uh, watch Cobra Kai on a daily. Like, yeah, you you know, unless you have weapons on you, yeah. Yeah, and, and also, I can't, I, I can't like mouth off to this guy and be like, "You fuck you," blah blah blah. He just gave me work. That's right. And he could give me work in the future. So there's there's that kind of power dynamic thing with a headliner. And as a younger, you know, lower on the totem pole comic where I'm going to just mm-hmm, mm, yeah. smile and nod, smile and nod, smile yeah. and nod. But, yeah. you know, also manage the situation. Oh, here's someone who was watching the show. Oh, she loved your show. Kind of pawn him off on her and like kind of get out of get out of harm's way, if you will. But yeah, yeah sometimes the, the shit starter in me wants to see how far they'll take it. Just yeah. for the story. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame you. I, I have you ever experienced this thing where you know somebody's talking shit to you like that, and you just you're you just walk up and be like, you know what, just fuck off. Just tell them to fuck off to their face. Um. Oh God. I usually do it with a, like a look. I'm just like, mm. what's the look, Kat? It's pretty much this. <laughs> Does it work? Does it work? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like completely unamused. Like, oh god, I didn't have to say anything. They know. They know. I'm like, I'm not having this. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm better. No. Don't even. Don't yeah. even cry, honey. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just. I was just talking to Solange about that. That our like being a female comic is a hazardous job. It comes. It's a hazardous job, right? It is. There, it, you know, it could be a slew of things, right? It could be. From a verbal passing, like a male comic uh, harassing you, uh, to a male uh, audience member harassing you, to you walking to your car and next thing you know, some creep is waiting for you. Yeah, uh, you know, there's like a slew of things. What's crazy is it's like it's it's like a constant dance of it's like a constant dance with the devil, which sounds ridiculous. But see, here's the thing: the same way that they can be our biggest our our biggest threats, they're yeah. also our biggest allies sure. and then sometimes the ones that have been our allies become the threats and so we can never really have our guard down i always have to be like is this guy being nice for now and defending me for now because he's gonna harass me in three months very possible he's planning to harass me in a year oh, very possible so i like you can't even get close to anybody that that's one thing i've experienced for sure but i mean i'm grateful for the allies that i do have like one yeah. time i was at the van Nuys comedy club i was hosting there for a, a long while and you know gr really grateful for uh the guy who runs that show um who was a big fan of mine he's like please host all the time. And I'm like, sure, Aww. I'll take the stage time. <laughs> um, and one time it, I think it was, uh, uh, it was an older male comic, um, mm -hmm. someone in his fifties, but established headliner, pretty well respected around LA. And I introduced him. And when he got on stage, he goes and give it up for cats. Glorious ass. Oh my God. That is a heavenly ass. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pop it up. Wow. And I was just like. Did you say something when you, because you were the host, right? I was the host. Um, I think I did say something, but it was a couple years ago. I don't remember what. That was one where I was like genuinely grossed out, especially because well, I would have been grossed out no matter what age he was, but it was like bonus gross because he's old. Um, oh. And here's the, when someone's older, it's that much worse because they should know better. better. Right. They really should. And, and luckily, you know, I know that, um, the, the guy who runs that club, Billy Bats, he's really sweet. Yeah. And he walked me to my car and he spoke to the guy afterwards and was like, dude, you can't do that. And, and Billy Bats, God bless him. Like he's an angel he, before every show. He tells all of the comedians, mm -hmm. um, do not say anything gross or harass the waitresses for some reason. That particular com comic was like, well, he didn't say anything about the comedian. <laughs> you said anything about the host. So I guess it's fucking free season. It's open season. <laughs> And I'm sure Billy was like, wait, I have to say it. Like, why do I have to say it? But you know what it is, Kat? It's exactly that. Why does he have to say it? Are you not a grown-ass 
ass enough man. Clearly, you, you're a headliner. That means you've been doing comedy for at least 10 to 15 years, minimum. Oh, yeah. That oh, means yeah. you know better. But the fact that you somehow feel, because you've done it before and you got away with it, that somehow you're going to do it again and get away with it. But this time, you're not. And the irony is this is actually a headliner that I had a lot of respect for. And up until then had been very professional towards me. Like he never, he like rarely ever talks to me in the green room when we've done, when we've been on the same lineup in the past, like he's very much. So I always thought he was just a respectful man who like loves his wife and, and won't even, cause you know, those guys who are like so monogamous that they won't even have a conversation with you. Yeah, like, I got that vibe from like him. Like Mike Pence vibe. Like yeah. That. Yeah. One hundred percent. I got a Mike Pence vibe from him. And so I always kind of left him alone. It was very polite. Oh, you know, oh, how would you like to be introduced? Okay, thank you very much. All right, have a good night. Like, I've always been, like, exactly very, like, very professional. And then he just completely, out of nowhere, did that. Well, he had to, he had to drink a, he had to drink a, a little just to loosen up to be like, I have the courage now to say that her ass is glorious. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, like wow. I had a, I had a comic, uh, I had, a, I had a host once say, uh, uh, give it up for Mona Shake uh, coming to the stage. Her jeans is so tight tonight, so tight. I was like, mm. ah, my jeans. I didn't. I, I mean, I was, I think I was still fairly new at the time to the game, so I didn't kind, kind of have this kind of uh, smart mouth the way I do, and I also don't give a fuck anymore. So I just tell people to fuck off. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's different. I think I feel like I was just telling Solange that every female comic that ever starts or as an open mic should get a pamphlet of like, these are the things to expect as a female comic. You will be harassed no matter what. You could show up in a fucking hazmat suit and still fucking get harassed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I feel very fortunate because these things that I'm telling you, I feel like I'm one of the least harassed female comedians. <laughs> And that's not least harassing at all, by the way. Yeah, that's like, yeah, exactly. I, 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 I feel like relative to the horror stories I hear from other comedians, I'm like w- technically kind of well respected, but the bar is so low. Oh, right. I, I mean, I mean, the fact that you know I can walk in safely and walk out without somebody making some any kind of like sexual comment at me I think I won that day like I'm just like wow this was a winning day today yeah Where nothing crazy or sexual happened um I, I actually wanted to ask you like um have you like you said that you usually go on tours you know with uh, people you trust or you know uh but ha- but there's always do you, don't you feel that even if you're staying at a hotel room while on tour, there's always like this kind of lurking feeling like is somebody following? Is somebody watching me? Like, do I can somebody please walk me to my car? I think I'm you like, need to smoke less weed, Mona. Just smoke less weed? <laughs> yeah, you sound paranoid. No, I mean I wouldn't I'm kidding. I think it's um <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't think I've ever smoked so much weed until the pandemic hit. And um, I, I, I wish that I was smoking more weed when I was on tour so I can like tolerate this shit. But it was, yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, I think I've, I usually feel decently safe, oddly enough. There's no reason I should. I should absolutely not feel safe. <laughs> if I, think that you, I think that you need to start smoking weed. <laughs> You need to get more paranoid. Yeah. I, um, more paranoid. yeah. I mean, I'm just, it's a real thing. Like, it's a real thing. Kat. If I'm alone as a woman, I always feel unsafe, though. And that's right. that's touring or not touring. I'm always worried about my safety. Um, yeah. You know, is somebody going to break into the hotel room that I'm in? I should make sure I'm at a better hotel and not a shitty one where, where right. murders happen. Um, right. So I always, I always think about that. Yeah. I mean... There's, or, there's always a threat of danger. Yeah, or staying in a hotel room that doesn't open into the fucking parking lot. Like those are the worst. Those are the worst. They're like, no. 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 I don't know if somebody's just gonna break in, like what's gonna happen? Like the imminent danger of it is like always there, right? Mm-hmm. You know. I um I uh uh I, I wanted to actually ask you, you know, um how how much do you think harder it is uh, to be a female comic than a male comic? A lot harder. You want to know why? Because it's a boys club. Yeah. It is. 
I hear of guys who start and then like a year in they're touring with some big headliner surely because of the fact that they're good drinking buddies and that's it. They don't even have to be that good at comedy. Um, the same comedian who uh, called, who told everybody to grab my, uh, my, my lady bits. Um, the guy who he tours with is crass. It's a bunch of like jokes about buttholes. It's not smart. It's very, and buttholes. Yeah. It's like dirty jokes that are not smart. And I'm like, this like, is who you chose to so tour with cool. you? Yeah. 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 I, I know people who are so much funnier, who have so many more jokes per minute. I mean, I'm not even jealous. I'm not jealous for myself. I mean, a little bit I'm butthurt because I know I'm funnier. Yeah. But I know people who are way funnier than me who would deserve to tour with this guy. But he likes his buddy because his buddy gets drunk with him. That's right. That's right. And, you know, Kat, for us, if we are, like, mingling after the show, right, and they're under the, you know, they've gotten high or they're drinking, there's always that, oh, my God, like, you're so cute or you're so ch-. There's always that sexual angle with us, right? Some kind of an expectation. Yeah, so I could never tour with this particular headliner because he's just going to try to sleep with me. Right. So right. I don't even have that option. So there's those. There's the horn dog headliners who you can't tour with. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then there's the ones who uh who are married and those I can't blame. I mean, you have to maintain happiness in your marriage and if your partner's like I feel uncomfortable with you touring with a female comic, I mean, what sure. are you going to do? <laughs> like sure. what? Sure. So I can't I can't hold that against them, but between those two things, it's like oh cool, great. We basically as female comedians have to free solo up a cliff while the men get to take an escalator. Yeah, 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 that's what about, right? And you know, you know, it's like, I, I think some of the people think, listening to this, like, this is not a rant about like, boo who I'm a victim. It's just telling you the reality of what it's like. Like, this is the reality of it, right? Because we're not like sitting here and crying about it and saying, oh my God, I just like, quit the business because it was this. It was just like, no, we fucking trek on anyways, right? We fucking follow you know dodge the shit like neo right dodging all these fucking different dicks coming our way and we're just like dodging it and doing all these moves and still keep going and and you know male comics never they never have to worry about like a dick being swing on their face like that's just not a thing yeah but but i don't want to be 100 percent negative because you know, it's not impossible you just have to work harder at it which isn't fair we do we have to be like Yes, you know, twice it's as kind of the same place, yeah. um, which which really stinks. That sucks so much. Yeah. And then and and then not to mention, then we're competing also against the girls who uh, do take the low road. If you know I mean, what I mean, the the the, the bro hoes. Uh, is that what we're calling them? Yeah, that's the term for them. The the ones who will sleep their way to get. Oh my god! I'm like such a slut. I'm like such a slut. Those girls. Mm-hmm. Because there are women who will actually use their sexuality to get stage time and are not at all funny. And right. that is like enraging because I'm like, <laughs> actually, I've been writing jokes and I never <laughs> not you ho. Like um, <laughs> you're there. Let's not let's not beat around the bush. Those yeah. people exist. Yeah. And we know who they are. <laughs> and I think they know who they are, I would hope. Um, I would hope that they know, or maybe they don't, they probably don't. Um, but, but we have to, we have to compete with that meaning, meaning, um, that's another reason we have to be twice as funny. I have to be twice as funny because I have to convince the booker that he should book me so that his show is good instead of the girl who's going to suck his dick. Right. Absolutely. And you know, Kat, and, and to be, to, to be fair and just try to kind of give like this kind of overall, you know, proper, you know, and another, I cannot proper, but an added perspective to it. The system is designed in a way where it caters to the male. That's what it caters to, right? And these girls get insecure where they're just like, oh, my God, like, I'm still new. I want to be able to get there, and I don't know what to do. And maybe this is the passage. This is the way to kind of get booked and, you know, tour. And, you know, so the system is kind of designed in a way where they're just like, yeah. I mean, when you have somebody established like Joey Coco Diaz, you know, who's on Joe Rogan's podcast, 
bragging about the fact that he would make a girl suck his dick just to get stage time. So he's a predator. Well, he's a predator. He's a threat, no, no denying, right? But when he's up there and like bragging about the fact that, you know, he has this girl giving him blowjobs just to get stage time, you know, when you're a young female comic, like you're impressionable, you're scared. You're like, you know, you're just like, I, I guess maybe for some, it's just like, maybe that that is the way to get up there. That is the, maybe that's just the way of, to do it. It's not, I'm not, I'm not defending their horrible behavior, but I'm, what I'm saying is, that it's almost like the system is designed in a way where some of them can kind of fall into that and be like, oh. Yeah. And, and I don't want to sound like I'm defending the guys, yeah. but I think that there's something else besides the extreme. Like Joey Coco Diaz is, is the extreme. He's like in the Harvey Weinstein zone yeah. of like, you and know. And nothing's happened to him, like, Pat. Nothing's happened to him, by the way. Nothing. He was bitching and moaning. Oh, they're coming for me. They're coming after me. Nothing happened to him. No one came for him. But there's people, there's situations that are more in the in-between, you know, where the guy isn't necessarily going, hey, tit for tat. It's more unspoken of a flirtation. And then the girl says, oh, there's an opportunity for me here. And this is an easy shortcut for me to get the stage time that I need instead of working hard. Yeah. 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 I mean, look, I I think you and I have been both, both have probably done shows where you see a female comic up there and you're just like, who is she fucking? Like, who who did, who did is she fucking, right? I remember being at the comedy store once, uh, standing next to um, a comedian who's been there a long time, very, very funny comic. And I remember turning to him and I remember seeing this uh, female comic up there. I, I think she was like Russian or something. And I, I, I couldn't really understand her because she had a very heavy accent. And, uh, I, and I couldn't understand her. And I remember turning to this comic and I was just like, who's she fucking? He's like, oh, he's fucking the booker. It's like, makes sense. Makes, makes sense. Like sometimes you see them up there and you're just like, okay. But I, I feel, cat like that could only take you so far. Then you got to deliver. Like when you, you, that can only take you so far and then you got to bring your shit. Otherwise you're just, you just lost that opportunity that you, that you sucked your way to. That's true. But then in the meantime, like, yeah, at some point they hit their limiting thing. But in the meantime, I'm not getting enough stage time. Sure. So, I mean, I'm complaining from a separate thing. But it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, eventually they'll get theirs. But there's all the collateral damage of the other women, not just myself, but all the other hardworking women who actually are putting in the hours, the time, grinding it out. And then, yeah. Yep. And then can't, they, they have people say no. This reminds me of a, um, yeah. there was a guy, he, he books a show. I want to say in Long Beach, long um, at a Mexican restaurant in Long Beach. People uh-huh. who know, know who I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Um, and, and I remember I was a relatively new comic. I didn't know of a lot of shows in LA, but I knew of him cause he had come to do shows in Ventura. And I think we had done a few together so I asked him if I could get booked on his show. And mm-hmm. he wrote back, you know, if I was a woman, I would uh, definitely try to offer some BJs so that I could try and get more stage time. What? Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I have a really funny clip. I don't think I need to do that. And I sent it to him. Um, it was me at the Ice House. And he goes, you know, a lot of festivals don't even accept clips from the Ice House because it's a hot room. As if he's a festival. Mm-mm. Motherfucker, you're at a Mexican restaurant. I got into Laughing Skull with that clip, buddy. And he's telling me that for his Mexican restaurant, that's not good enough. Oh, okay. No, no. And to this day, I haven't done a stupid Mexican restaurant because I'm not going to be I don't fucking blame you. Like, because you have standards. That's why, Kat. And you're not... Wow, blowjobs, huh? Blowjobs. Wow, wow, wow. Um, mm-hmm. you know, um, I um one of the things that I always have wondered is that, you know, these young comics that you were saying, like you could be a male comic doing comedy for a year and the next thing you know, you're fucking touring and you know, going all over the place with like established comics. You know, one thing a lot of people don't realize is like with female comics, like, you know, this is the fucking reality of our biology. Like, we only have so many number of years in our biology to be able to, you know, work hard, get our careers going, make a living at it, and possibly have families if I if we need to, right? 
males don't really have to worry about that, right? So for us, it's like we're fucking getting punched twice, where it's like you're not, you're fucking hustling. You're trying to fucking get work, right? You're working hard. You're being honest. Um, you know, you're trying to tour, but you can't because these fucking assholes won't take you. And your biological clock is also simultaneously kick- ticking at the same fucking time. Yes, and you could freeze your eggs, but that costs $10,000, which you don't have. <laughs> you don't have because no motherfucker will take you on a tour to fucking go and, like, at least you can make the money so you can, you know, put, put that towards that. So I think a lot of people don't even factor in, you know, how many female comics even just, like, sacrifice that part of their lives. They just sacrifice it. They're like, That's they the saddest part. That's one of the saddest things is to completely sacrifice that. And, like, yeah. as I'm coming – you know, I've been doing this seven years, so you can guess I'm coming up on my biological clock starting to get a little bit louder and I'm going, well, I'm going to have to either make some progress in comedy or make some decisions to buy myself time in comedy. Like, I don't think people really understand the sacrifice that their funniest female comedians make. Now, Amy Schumer and Ali Wong yep. and a few others actually have had the luxury of both being successful and getting to be moms. And yep. that is huge. It's such a blessing. But yep. many female comics, right. they right. just don't. But Ali Wong and Amy Schumer like, were already established and were already doing them, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, some people would come out and be like, well, they did it. Why can't you do it? Well, but it's not the same. You know, it, it's just not the same. Ali Wong has a very specific kind of kind, kind of sense of humor. Amy Schumer has a very specific kind of sense of humor, right? And that's what they kind of build themselves on. But you know, I, I don't, I don't specifically do that kind of comedy. I don't think you do that kind of comedy. It's a different sort of comedy. So it's just like it's just not the same, you know. And that's two out of hundreds of female comics, hundreds versus male comics who just get up there. And our next thing you know, are just fucking touring and getting TV shows left and right. And you're just like, oh, that's that must be nice. No. Like, um, there is a there's a we're going to we're going to start wrapping up. There is a there is a male comic that is a, he's a very nice guy, but I he's part of the cool kids at the comic store. He's one of the cool kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and he also does like a singing thing sometimes. And I remember every time I watch his set, I'm like, what is his comedy about? what is it about i can never figure it out it's just random weird immature childish butthole jokes that are just thrown in and he's just part of the cool clan and he 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 got married recently he's getting shows he's fucking has a big following and you're just like but what is your comedy about though the thing is, we're different. We're just a different animal. You know, he if he has a following, he has a following. Like, people, like what the comedy store wants is people who, like, if people like it, they like it. Does that make sense? So it doesn't matter if it's, like, meeting this ideal that you and I have as, like, what is, like, what's the art supposed to be? It's yeah. just, like, oh, people are into it. They'll come to the comedy store. They'll watch a show. They'll buy the drinks. This is, he's good. He's a keeper. Sure. You know what I mean? Right. He's a keeper and, also because he also kind of does things to be, you know, part of the cool gang. Like, hey, you know, you and I could never really get away with that cat because it always comes with a platter of dicks being served to us. And, you know, mm-hmm. and we have to be like, am I cool with this platter of dicks or am I not cool with this platter of dicks? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, it's rough. And I think you and I are smarter comedians, like our type of comedy, our ideal comedy it, yeah, you, you're more political. You like political commentary. You have been a lot more political than any time. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I'm a little bit that way as well. I like to yeah. to bring that stuff in, and and so we're just we're just going to be different than them. Like we don't like the stupid stuff. Who is that guy, Eddie? I don't know. He's got that show on Comedy Central, and it's just a bunch of bullshit. Um, I uh, God, it's just like all over the place. The show's like super random. It's on Adult Swim. Oh. I'm forgetting his name. You guys who are listening, you you know who I'm talking about. It's just a random show where it's like a talk show, but it's like a spoof show. You talking about Eric Andre? Eric Andre. Yeah. Have you watched? Do you even think it's funny? I don't. I've met him. 
I'm like a mother earth. You can zone out and watch it, but I I'll if I do that, I feel like my brain is rotting and I I'm like how did this get on TV? And then I remember it's not about what we think. It's a, it's about what the people who like that think. There's enough people who like that that hey, it's good business. It's funny to somebody. Yeah. And and that's what matters. What sucks because you know, maybe the art is supposed to have meaning. Maybe the art is supposed to be better than that. <laughs> but well, he's also the- very good friends with uh, Hannibal Burris. So, you know, that kind of helps too. You know, I mean, that's another thing, right, Kat? I mean, uh, I'm not going to mention a very established female comic. Uh, she uh, She's a Latina uh, and she goes on tours and she never, ever takes female comics too open for her never mm, i think of i think i know who you're talking about and that's annoying <laughs> it's disappointing you know it's just it's hard security to- it's it's insecurity it's not wanting to be overshadowed or give up the reins or you know introduce competition yep stephen peretti said catering to the lowest common denominator yep and listen they work and their biological clock is not ticking by any means um uh, mm-hmm. They can probably have kids till like eighty five. Probably right before they can actually just like just ejaculate and just die and be like, "Yep, had a kid." Totally. I know. could never do that lowest common denominator comedy, the like Eric Andre stuff. I mean, I'm sure I could just put a bunch of random shit, like just write down a bunch of nouns, like fucking Mad Libs, put it in a hat, pull them out, and be like, "This is what we're doing for the show today." I mean, yeah, anyone yeah, can do that. Yeah. Well, this is, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, paper. Like uh, We're going to put spaghetti on somebody's face and then light some firecrackers, then pretend to do an interview, but then a bird's going to fall on my head. <laughs> like, I, that wouldn't be fulfilling. I think I'd quit comedy if I had, like, that wouldn't be my thing. Right. It's me thing. either. I mean, I, I mean, never want to do comedy if that was what I had to do to be funny. I, but I think I think we've uh, figured out a problem, Kat. We have standards and we need to just not have standards. I think that's the problem. Well, shit. Wow. Let's wow. all go have babies. Screw yeah. them. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna, I wanna be knocked up and uh, you know be on stage and just uh, talk about how my water's gonna break any minute. Uh, you know, and people were like, "That is edgy. That is amazing. Thank you." Right. Oh, my God. Uh, Cat Alvarado, where where can people follow you? You can Uh, follow me on Instagram. That's the that's the main place where I I post funny stuff at the Cat Alvarado. That's C-A-T-A-L-V-A-R-A-D-O, the Cat Alvarado. I'm also on Twitter, but I'm mostly just like ranting and raging about political shit. It's not that funny. (laughs) I'm just mad. Um, So so follow me on the Instagram. I've, I've got some silly stuff there. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right, my friend. Always nice chatting with you. I will talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Stay safe out there. That was the lovely Cat Alvarado. Hope you guys enjoyed that conversation. Uh, I know I definitely did. Uh, you guys, I will see you guys on Monday with a brand new guest. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. It would mean the world to me. I am encouraging all my viewers to go on my YouTube. Uh, you can go uh, to youtube.com forward slash Mona Shake, my last name, and the word comedian, Mona Shake comedian. Uh, and you can subscribe to my channel and you can watch all my playlists, especially Mona's Rants and my Minority Reports uh, podcast and digital series. Uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm almost I'm like two thirds of the way for my watch hours for my YouTube to be monetized. And I am encouraging everyone to please uh, go and uh, you know watch my playlist. I'm just trying to get my numbers up so I can be monetized. Uh, as uh, a lot of you guys know that I've like as stand up comics, like we've just lost all our touring. I've lost about 90% of my income and, uh, I'm just trying to work really hard and do these live streams. And, um, uh, so, and I'm trying to monetize my YouTube channel. So it would mean the world to me if you could do that. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mona's comedy. You can follow me on Facebook at Mona Shit comedian, but please, please, please do go on my YouTube and subscribe there. Uh, and watch my playlist while you're cleaning the house or while you're driving or whatever. Uh, just trying to rack up the watch hours. So thank you very much, Stephen Peretti, for uh, checking it out. I appreciate that. Um, James, thank you very much. Thanks, Mona. Uh, thank, thank you, James. Guys, have a great weekend. Stay safe out there. Please wear your masks. Have a good night.